This is teaching moments with Trevor. So this is a clip from uh, from from Foul Territory. My friends over there, at Foul Territory. They sent me this. This is a concept, nerd concept called the dead zone fastball. A lot of you guys might not know what that means. What we talk about when we say dead zone fastball. Dead zone fastball. Do you know what that is? I do. I had never heard of it until Thank yesterday. You. Can those, you? Those are the ones you used to hit, bud. Those Come are the on. ones yeah, you used to hit, so bud. Good. So good. <laughs> Paul Seawall technically throws a dead zone fastball from a induced vertical break and horizontal break standpoint, but his slot makes it unique, right? So you have to take arm slot and release point into account when talking about that, you know what I mean? Okay, so you've been introduced to dead zone fastballs, okay? Now, they don't really explain it in the video. Like, he doesn't give a breakdown because the assumption is everyone involved knows what it is, but I'm gonna give you a diagram on what a dead zone fastball means, all right? It reacts to gravity the way that hitters are trained naturally to assume that it's going to. So it's easy to hit, basically. It doesn't ride and it doesn't sink. It's somewhere in between, okay? What that looks like, here is a movement plot. So this is horizontal. This is hard as hell. I should get a little, and this is vert, okay? So let's say this is 20 vert, which is good. And this is 20 horizontal. This is good, okay? 20 would be elite for either one, which is nice that it's the same number. I, I love that. A guy with high vert, and say this is like six. And so if they're 20 and this is their cluster, that is a that looks like a, that looks like something bad. So if all your pitches are here, that's elite ride. If all your pitches are here, low vert, say it's like two and then 20 horizontal, that would be sink. Flash run. You wanna be here or here? If you're here at like 14, 14, that is dead zone. So basically when people are designing their freaking fastballs, they're trying to avoid being in this area. You're trying to get up here or here, and you're trying to find a pitch that can get you in one or the other, and then you try to use your off-speed pitches off of it. So that when we talk about dead zone, we're talking about the, those pitches that are in between those two areas. Does that make sense? Egu. It's the second thing I would like to teach you during today's teaching moment. This also was just brought up in that video. So he said, Paul Seawald has a dead zone fastball metrically. So basically, metrically means his stuff tells him he's a dead zone fastball, but you can compensate with that through deception. So here is what deception and stuff and the difference is in how you can make a dead zone fastball either work or not work. So this is a mound and this is a pitcher. It's going to be me if you could tell. There's certain things about the, the the drawing that make it me, okay? That's deception, that's stuff. So after the ball is delivered, once the ball leaves your hand, how it moves is considered stuff and everything before you release the ball is considered deception. So if your stuff is a dead zone fastball, you have to, you have, to have something elite in your deception to make it good. For example, Paul Seawald has a low arm angle and a, and a sideways spin. So he drops really low like he's a side armor, steps at a righty, so guys assume it's gonna like run. That's what your natural, your brain tells you it's gonna do. And instead it stays true or cuts a little bit. So basically what they see before he releases the ball is not informing how the ball moves very well. And that makes him effective. That and he has good command and a good slider. A slider that he has good command of and everything moves away from a righty. Our third teaching moment, Bryce Miller abusing Zach Neto and his massive leg kick. Now, this is interesting because this is a conversation we had last year. I'm like, dude, that kid is gonna get, he is going to get abused because his leg kick is so big and then he has to time it. Like his timing is so necessary for him to get the head out. If you have any velocity, if you can just pause on him, he's dead. I only faced Neto once and there was someone on base. So I couldn't do the pause, but if I got him with nobody on base, I probably would have did this too. But just check this out. Bryce Miller, this was very clearly on purpose, but this is the second at bat of the day. Players who just pause. Not get much time to groom with the minors. 
so he had to leg kick twice. And it, look at him. He's like, oh, well, that sucked. And then here's the second pitch. Pauses again. He gets him again. He's all looking at him. He's like, dang, dude. He has no idea what's about to happen. He's like, is he going to pause on me again? He goes. And then he just goes. Ball. He's like, you know what? Let's just go again. And he gets messed up. But watch the leg kick here. Watch the, like, watch the leg kick on this one. So what Neto does is he tries to uh, uh, not do the late kick with two strikes. I don't know why he does it with less than that. So watch how late he starts his pick, his his uh, late kick. When he's already separated his hands, he's used to like, he's used to like being up right here. And he thought about it. And he was just behind. Like, it's almost like he went up and was like, oh wait, no, I'm doing my short kick. And just got blown away by a sinker 200 iq bryce miller 200 iq also really quickly if you could do me a favor everyone on youtube and give me a like that would be very helpful and i would really really very much appreciate it